Hello, and welcome to the first installment of the Smart Grid Made Simple series, Capabilities, Benefits, Costs, and Risks. My name is Paul Alvarez. I'm president of the Wire Group, a utility consultancy. I've had 12 years experience in the electric utility industry, uh, including some unique experience in the Smart Grid, which I'll share with you shortly. And uh, I've created the Smart Grid Made Simple series to help people understand uh, what the smart grid is, how to maximize its value as a consumer, but also uh, how to encourage the utilities that serve you to maximize the value of smart grid investments. In part one, we'll establish a foundation of, ba uh, establish a foundation of basic understanding um, about the smart grid in about 15 minutes. I'd like to begin with a brief introduction on the Smart Grid Made Simple series and the Wire Group. The series is a pre set of pre-recorded webcasts designed for lay people to better understand the Smart Grid, the capabilities available, the benefits and costs of those capabilities, the risks, uh, drivers, and challenges uh, to maximizing um, investment uh, value from those investments. As I mentioned in part one, we'll be establishing a foundation for understanding of the uh, next parts of the series. Uh, Part two will address some of those drivers and challenges and the implications. Uh, and part three will look specifically at investor-owned utilities and the regulators uh, and special issues uh, there. The Wire Group uh, is uh, a consultancy designed to unleash the latent value in distribution utility businesses. You can see the kind of clients that we serve. We uh, specialize not only in the smart grid, but also in renewable energy program design and de development, uh, demand side management program design and development and uh, customer services enhancement and uh, represent the entire uh, life cycle of a consulting engagement from strategy and planning uh, to implementation and performance measurement and improvement. So let's get started. Uh, in part one, we are going to uh, start with an introduction to what the smart grid is. Uh, and the six capabilities that most people think of, most utilities and industry insiders anyway, think of uh, when they think about uh, what smart grid capabilities are. Uh, we'll talk about um, the two deployment evaluations uh, that my teams have completed on uh, uh, some large smart grid deployments in the United States. And that will serve as a reference point for the uh, rest of our discussion. We'll talk about the benefits we found, both in terms of economics and reliability, uh, and the drivers of those benefits. We'll talk about the costs, risks, and drivers um, of cost and risk by capability, uh, and preview uh, Smart Grid Made Simple Series Part 2. There's also some notes uh, in the appendix that you, you might be interested in uh, reviewing. The smart grid is essentially uh, the computerization of the electric distribution grid. Uh, today, the grid is pretty dumb. The utilities basically put power onto the lines for customers to uh, take off from the lines and use in their homes and businesses. And um, the utility really doesn't know much about what's going on um, in the distribution grid. Uh, and if there's a problem, they don't hear about it until you call. Um, they typically don't know how much um, electricity you're using or when unless they send somebody out. Um, or, or pull data that, from the meter that helps them see um, how much you use since the last meter reading, and they bill you for that. So uh, it's analogous to the, to the computerization, computerization of the U.S. telecom network that happened in the United States a couple of decades ago and provided us with things like voicemail and call forwarding and call waiting. Um, that's a digitization of, of, of a network similar to what's uh, about to occur on the electric side. There are uh, two kind of... Um, types of smart grid uh, com components. There's the utility side and the customer side. On the customer side, of course, there are the meters, um, which help utilities measure uh, not only how much electricity you're using, and perhaps gas and water as well, but when you're using that electricity, it's important because electricity prices vary by time of day. Um, they can also communicate with those um, meters on a two-way basis. Um, there's also what's called home area networks, or for business customers, um, energy management systems, which enable you or parties you designate to uh, run things in your home, which is important for participating um, and taking, taking advantage of time differentiated rates, which we'll talk about. On the utility side, there's distribution automation, which helps utilities isolate outages to fewer numbers of customers when they do occur. Distribution monitoring, which helps them uh, find 
identify and find those faults uh, faster. Um, there's volt var control, which is a little technical, but which um, uh, helps utilities better manage voltage and power factor on their distribution system. And then finally, substation automation. And uh, these components are typically uh, offered individually. Uh, customers can, or sorry, utilities can pick and choose what it is they care to uh, focus on. The information presented in this series uh, is basically derived from two deployment uh, reviews or evaluations that my team's conducted. One of uh, Excel Energy's uh, Smart Grid City project in Boulder, Colorado, as well as Duke Energy's uh, Ohio deployment, uh, 800,000 customers um, uh, in that case. But not only do we look at those uh, particular utilities, but also um, emerging uh, measurement frameworks that are out there, um, public, public utility business cases that may, that may be available uh, on Smart Grid, um, various regulatory orders and state policy initiatives. Um, these were um, uh, extremely intensive uh, deployment evaluations. Both took thousands of man hours and lasted uh, over a year each. Um, and of course, a lot of uh, existing research we looked at for specific um, evaluation, um, smart grid deployment uh, benefits, and then um, applicable uh, guidelines and standards. Our deployment evaluations consisted of two components. First, a benefit quantification regarding you know, how much benefit are you getting you know, out of this deployment or could you conceivably get out of this deployment. Uh, the second part being uh, kind of a, an effectiveness review. How or what could you do to maximize uh, those benefits as a utility? So um, first, the benefit quantification. Um, we looked at economic and reliability benefits. Um, uh, we used for that the uh, EPRI methodological approach to measuring cost and benefits of smart grid demonstration projects. Um, we established value propositions many times uh, in um, close cooperation with our clients. Uh, and then we gathered data, as I mentioned, not only examining existing research and talking to subject matter experts both within and outside the utility, but also in doing um, pre- and post-deployment -oper uh, operational data queries and meter tests to see what was the situation before the deployment and now what are the benefits um, you're enjoying after the deployment. Uh, we try to translate that into dollars wherever we could. We did cho choose, however, not to um, uh, try to put a, a dollar value on customer minutes out. That's a, a highly variable you know, kind of concept. Um, and then finally, uh, try to associate those benefits with specific systems, the six systems I described earlier. Um, sometimes multiple systems are required to deliver a, a specific value proposition, but at other times, uh, a single system is um, uh, available to uh, provide uh, many different types of value propositions. The second part of my team's evaluations uh, consisted of a and effectiveness review. Um, again, what, what is it the utility could do to increase benefits or reduce risks? Uh, we looked at customer services, uh, operations, uh, and IT risk. Uh, the customer service, uh, our, our reference source there, the Environmental Defense Fund, uh, the operational, uh, the Carnegie Mellon's um, smart grid maturity model, and uh, again, for the IT uh, security component, NIST's um, guidelines for smart grid cybersecurity. Uh, a similar process where we established a value proposition um, and then gathered data. We did do some uh, consumer market research, but also uh, extensive interviews and process documentation with utility employees pre and post deployment. So how did you do X, Y, and Z before you got the smart grid and how do you do it now? And we, these were extensive reviews. Uh, we rode with uh, trouble men in trucks. We went to substations. We were in call centers, uh, distribution control centers, uh, just about every part you could think of of a utility organization and uh, identifying best practices and providing some ideas uh, for utilities on how they could uh, maximize uh, value. So let's get to the uh, findings. Um, I want to let you know that we're going to look at the um, uh, economic and reliability uh, benefits that we found. Uh, and these results will be synthesized uh, from the two deployment evaluations we conducted as well as uh, all the ancillary research uh, we looked at uh, in the um, execution of those uh, deployment evaluations.
When it comes to economic benefits, what we found uh, interestingly was that 80 to 90 percent of the potential economic benefits come from just three places. Uh, one is meter reading cost reductions, uh, another is time differentiated rates, uh, and finally distribution efficiencies. I'm going to talk briefly about each of those. Uh, for the meter reading, um, the key driver is uh, w did your utility read meters manually prior to deployment? If so, um, you know, there's some pretty good savings there. If not, uh, there's very little savings obviously there. A lot of utilities have already automated uh, their meter reading uh, and no longer have uh, meter readers who need to walk up to your house. Uh, the second big area, time use rates. Uh, again, a lot of potential benefits but highly variable. Um, the benefit depends on how many people participate and what degree of behavior change they exhibit. So typically these programs consist of higher electricity prices during peak periods like when everyone's running, running their air conditioning and much lower electricity prices uh, in the evenings and in the fall uh, in the spring when uh, demand is lowest. And then finally um, distribution efficiency I meant to mention the interactive volt bar control and uh, what this does is in essence is allows customers to get the same amount of utility from a single kilowatt from fewer kilowatt hours and so uh, usage goes down and therefore uh, bills go down uh, and we'll talk about that and then all the other benefits um, uh, including uh, delays in, in capital upgrades for the distribution system prepayment programs have shown to, to reduce uh, customers use you somewhat and therefore their costs. Uh, revenue collections can be enhanced um, and that's good for everyone uh, when there's fewer theft, uh, less theft and things like that. We also quantified uh, reliability benefits and uh, we did indeed find some reliability benefits but the problem being that um, they're probably too small for the average customer to notice um, and most of the benefits are likely going to be in the future. Um, we did find that outage improved about or, uh, reliability improved about 20 percent um, from some of these uh, utility side capabilities um, depending on you know how reliable you, your utility was in the first place uh, the more reliable you are uh, the less the benefit uh, also storms would be another thing uh, in neither of these cases did the utilities um, experience significant storms during the test period so that might also uh, improve reliability or show demonstrate uh, greater reliability than we found in our test cases um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, a huge improvement in reliability might be 20 percent, but uh, because reliability is al al already so good, uh, that's not something most people would recognize. Uh, and again, there, are, there is more value in the future uh, for some of these reliability benefits, but the question becomes, you know, what do we have to be ready for exactly? Um, are electric vehicles going to take off? Is PV solar penetration going to take off? Uh, that's represented by the dark line here is consumer adoption and then you know what are you prepared to uh, invest in the grid to be ready you know because uh, it's gonna be tough to predict uh, when or if those things are going to take off and um, you know the cost of, of, pre of preparing for different levels of penetration uh, could be significant in addition to uh, economic and reliability benefits we also looked at costs and risks and the general finding there is that the utility side uh, represents potentially a better payback um, for smart grid investments than the customer side um, uh, AMI deployment is uh, pretty expensive um, driven largely by the features chosen by the utility and the communications uh, networks established most of the other uh, dry, uh, capabilities are driven by the extended deployment um, you can deploy some of these things on the entire network or only on parts of the network and we would uh, encourage a focus there but to see what the relative costs and risks are by capability we looked at an individual uh, circuit a couple hundred circuits are um, uh, generally used by utility to serve a metropolitan area and um, as you can see the um, utility side lower cost and risk relative to the customer side of capabilities um, and we evaluated the risk based on the, the rate of technology change as well as um, on the vendor supplier community and how rapidly uh, that was changing. You also need to look at the notes um, in the appendix to this slide to get a full appreciation of uh, what this slide is trying to uh, tell you. So that's it for part one. In part two we're going to talk more about the implications of these findings including uh, why smart grid investments are different from any other type of investment a utility might make, um, what they need to do to maximize the value from those investments and the implications for their regulators and governing boards. 
Here are those notes to slide 10 that I promised you. I encourage you to pause at this point and review them. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in SmartGrid Made Simple Series Part 2.